Traditions Bank brings you What's Cooking with Teresa. And Traditions Bank is our lead sponsor, so we want to thank them very much. Uh, today we're going to be serving portobello chicken. We're going to be serving twice baked potatoes, asparagus with lemon zest, garlic biscuits, uh, garlic cheese biscuits, and individual red velvet cakes, heart shaped. And we're going to wrap it up with a magic bar, just uh, just a little snack that you can have. So, and actually, this meal could be used as a Valentine meal for your sweetheart, or one that you can cook for dinner anytime. So please come back and join us. We're going to start with the chicken, and hope you enjoy the show. We want to thank Traditions Bank for being our lead sponsor of What's Cooking by Teresa. And Traditions Bank, it's your community bank. It's your bank that will make you feel like a family. They have a friendly staff. They have six locations in and around Coleman. One is downtown, one's Holly Pond, and then Dodge City. They also have them in Arley, Hayden, and Priceville. We have done a lot of business at Traditions, and we really enjoy, you know, whenever we have a need, we'll give them a call. So you need to call Debbie for a really good interest rate. Number is 256-735-2138. So give them a call. Another one of our sponsors, Coleman Primary Care. You know, Coleman Primary Care, they're the only family practice that's located downtown. They're on Clark Street, and that's about one block from the old Coleman Hospital in downtown. The doctors are Dr. Bostick, Montgomery, Elliot, Quinn, Schindel, and Dr. Kosha. So give them a call. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. They also take walk-ins at certain times, so give them a call. Their number, 256-734-3202. And we also want to thank Doug Doggett. You know, I mentioned them in the show. Doug Doggett's, you need to go down there, see what they have for Valentine's, because you know that special sweetheart needs a special gift. So give them a call. They're a family-owned, operated business. They're lo located on 215 Compass Way. Their telephone number, if you need to give them a call to see if they have that special item, is 256 734-7883. So give them a call if you need a watch, a diamond, a necklace, or any Sorelli jewelry. Also, we want to thank Dr. Swader, Dr. Sherry Swader, MD, and Dr. Diana Wilhite, CRNP. They are CPC neurologists. They're located in Professional Building 3 at Coleman Medical Center. And they do diagnosis and treatments of the nervous systems, and um, also they do um, uh, scanning, they do, uh, I want to get this straight because I don't want to mess her up. They do uh, the disorders of the brain, spinal cord, the nerves, and the muscles. So I wanted to get all that in there for Dr. Swader. They'll do EEGs, they do nerve conduction studies, and lumbar punctures. Their hours are Monday through Thursday from 8 to 4. They're only open on Friday from 8 to 10, so give them a call if you have any disorders. The number is 256 Seven three six one six one five. So any disorders of the nervous system or any back pain or anything, give them a call and tell Dr. Sweater thank you for being one of our sponsors. Catering by Teresa is rapidly becoming a tradition to the people of Coleman County. For over 12 years, Teresa has catered corporate events, banquets, class reunions, weddings, rehearsal dinners, business luncheons, and holiday parties. Made from scratch meals with little or no MSGs, the variety of choices ranges from prime rib and ribeye steaks to pulled pork barbecue, grilled pork chops, and chicken cordon bleu. Also good old country cooking like meatloaf, country fried steak, and homemade soups and stews. Even specialty menus include vegetarian, diabetic, hors d'oeuvres, and appetizers. Each job is customized to fit the customer. When you want a memorable event, call Catering by Teresa today. Thank you for joining us and coming back with us. First of all, I want to introduce my niece, Chastity Jordan. She is one of our sponsors. You've heard me talk about her on the commercials. Chastity uh, is a hairdresser at J. Drake Salon. Mm -hmm. Hello, Chastity. Hey, how are you? Well, we're, are you ready to cook? I think I'm ready. I'm ready. We have cooked a lot together. She is my niece, so as a family, you can tell we love to cook. We love it. So, you know, <laughs> you never want to trust a skinny cook, right? Yep. 
Nope, nope. All right, so we're going to start with the chicken. Are you going to help me with that? Hey, I sure will. Okay, I think we've got our skillet on. We've okay. turned it on to a medium to a medium high. So if you'll set the lid down there, sis. Okay. We, we call her sis. So if I do that during the show, just, you know, join the family. It's always been my name. That's it. <laughs> okay, good. We're not sizzling and burning. If you will, Chas. Okay. Go ahead and just put about a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, drizzle it in. Okay. On the portobello chicken, it's a step thing. What you do first, I have already pre-sliced some onions because we didn't want to cry here in our mascara run. Mm. So if you will start putting the onions in, okay. we will get those started and we'll see if it's, might need to turn it up if it don't sizzle. Oh, I hear going. a little sizzle. <laughs> All right, while Chaz is doing that, I'm going to be cutting up the peppers because what we want to do is the, uh, we want the onions to sweat down, but not caramelize. When you, I know you've heard the term um, sweating the onions. All that is, it's when they get, uh, start to get tender, like a tender crisp, but not a, a brown car caramelization. So that's what we want. We don't want them to get completely done for this recipe, because they are going to have to go out and uh, go back in there and cook a little more. So, let me get my little trash bowl over here. Yeah, we'd rather the onions sweat than us sweating the kitchen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, did y'all notice how I did the bell pepper? I forgot to show you. Instead of cutting out the top, I just go down the sides. It leaves all the seeds intact, saves a mess. You'll still have a few seeds left, and you'll want to get out the membrane if there's any. But by cutting it that way, usually you can leave the membrane with the, uh, the peppers. So, we're just going to give, it doesn't have to be any particular slice. We're just going to cut these down. I've already have some pre-sliced because I like to show as many things on the show, give you as many options to cook as possible without wasting all of our prep time. So I've started with those. Are we still cooking? We We're still got still a light on? There. Yep, it's looking good though. All right. If you want to, you can add those peppers because I've almost got these done. Perfect. Okay, I want to show you a little tip. When I set my board out, it's wanted to slide a little, so I dampened the cloth. You can use a clean dishcloth. You can use the paper towels. Dampen the cloth because without it, if you'll see, put your cloth down, put your cutting board down. Might save a cut finger. So see, that's a secret she shares with y'all, and she never showed me that till today. So. <laughs> I was putting it uh -huh. down, and she said, I never knew that. Never knew it. So, okay, so you get my secrets that she does. Mm -hmm. What can I say? <laughs> okay, while those are cooking, if you want to, I'm going to, I'm going to use my big spoon because I didn't put a little one out here. I want to salt those just a little but not much, because we have marinated our chicken in moors. I like to use moors because it doesn't contain any MSGs. So, and another little trick, you can also take your wet cloth, Wipe your board down if it's not a contaminated food item. You never want to do that with a meat, but a fresh vegetable you can. So, what we're going to do now, these are the portobello mushrooms. Okay, now on the mushrooms, what I like to do, I don't use the stem. I take the stem off, getting my large spoon again. I'm going to put this here because I want to work right over it. Can you see the ribs inside the portobello mushrooms? These ribs... I've cooked with them, I've cooked without them, but for presentation, I like to spoon them out because if you don't, some of the darkness comes out, and you don't have to get it all out, but you do want to spoon uh, most of that rib out. It just makes for a prettier, uh, completed item. So, And I could have already had these prepped beforehand, but I wanted to show you so you would uh, know how to handle these. We coming along? Coming along. Just pop the stem Sounds out. Sounds like these. I wish we had smell of these. <laughs> it's smelling good in here. I know. I'll never forget when our youngest son, Micah, when he was about five or six, I was cooking spaghetti. <laughs> My mother called, and he said, Oh, Nanny, we're cooking spaghetti. Wait a minute. And he went and got a chair, and he pulled it up to the stove, and he held the phone over the pot of spaghetti sauce. And he said, oh, smell. <laughs> Serious is all get out. I love it. I love it. Serious. I love it. <laughs> and oh, mother went right along with it. She was talking about how good it smelled. 
That's so, Nanny. Yeah. So that was good. <laughs> so now we're going to take the mushrooms, and I, li I liked I like the big slices, so I'm not going to dice those down at all. And actually, I uh, I want to show you how to sharpen a knife in a few minutes. Usually, I sharpen my knife before I start cooking with it. And I, this is my favorite knife. I use it a lot. I didn't sharpen it this morning because I want to show you how to sharpen a knife. I'm going to put those over in. How's that? Ooh, that looks good. So if I started out with a sharp knife, you know. Mm -hmm. I love the color. That it we got really looks good. here. Now for Valentine's, I believe I would use all red bell pepper. Oh yeah. But I like the coloration. I do too. I'm coming along. Come along. Yeah, that looks great. I might have to fix this for Thomas. He loves mushrooms. Portobello. You'll have to fix it. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorites at home. Okay, we're almost finished with this. Okay, perfect. There you go. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean my knife off. And I wanted to use the knife before I sharpened it because I didn't want to have to take time to go clean the knife before we used it. So what you want to do, I just have a steel. You want to take your knife, any size knife. You never want to have it at a, a, a very uh, sharp angle because over it'll give you a quick sharp but not a long sharp. You want to have it almost as flat as possible. Raise it just, just a small degree, come down to you on the top. And what I do is I pick the bottom up and hold it almost as close and come to you. Do that. If you do this, it'll give you a quick sharp, like I said, but the sharp won't stay. The, the edge won't stay. So keep your knife just as flat as possible. And my husband taught me that. Because I would always hold my knife up and just go to town with it. Not a thing to do. So you just, and make sure you hold your, um, your rod out because, uh, the, the sharpening stone out, because you can get a little close. So. I'll save some money if I learn how to do that. There Mine you go. go. I throw them away. Go buy another one. Girl, give them to your aunt. I know. I know. It's awful. But <laughs> that's all you do as far as sharpening your knives. So I'll put my steel back here. Set this knife over to the side. And this is a bleach cloth here. I, uh, I always have one handy when I'm cooking. That way if I do need to wipe something off, I can. Okay. I'm going to set these down. Are we going good? Going great. Going great. All right. I tell you what, while those are cooking, I think okay. I'm going to start on the uh, garlic biscuits, the garlic cheese biscuits. Sounds good to me. Okay. On the garlic cheese biscuits, what I normally do, I've already got everything uh, pre-measured. We're going to start out with three cups of a biscuit mix. And it doesn't have to be any particular brand. Um, we, I buy this brand commercially, so this is what I use. All right, the biscuit mix, you're going to put in one cup of cheddar cheese and about, let me get my measuring spoons because I want to measure this one pretty accurately. You're going to put in a teaspoon of garlic. I know that does seem like a lot, but what I'm using here is a garlic powder, not a garlic salt because a garlic salt will put too much salt into it. I like to control that. And then we are going to use a half a teaspoon of salt in this. Okay. And to that, we're going to put, I'm going to start with about a cup and a half of milk. Now, when you're using a biscuit mix, it's already got the leavening agents in it. It's already got the, uh, the, the shortening or the butter. So you're not going to have to worry about that. Let me see. Always when you're doing a, a liquid measuring, you always... I've got a cup there. That's what I'm going to start with. You always want to put your uh, uh, measuring cup down level because when you're up high, it doesn't give you a true measurement. I'm going to start with that. And just give it a mix. The recipe calls for a half a cup of butter. So I start with... Uh, 
with the milk first. You don't want it to be a very wet dough. You want it to be a workable dough, just like a, a regular homemade biscuit dough that you're working with. So I've got my half a cup of melted butter here. I'm going to pour just a little bit because I need a little bit of liquid. We're going to reserve the rest of it to brush the top. This is just something that you just have to keep working in because if you have too much liquid, I think I said a cup and a half of milk, but I just used a cup on this because I think I changed, modified my recipe a little. I went with a drier mix. And then uh, about a fourth of a cup of the melted butter is all we're going to need to round this out. Okay. Now, we have this ready. Handy dandy little scoop. I use this scoop to make my garlic cheese biscuits. I use it to make my hush puppies. I, make, I use it with my cookies. So it's just all around. It's awesome. So I've got my pan. Of course this batch will make much more than what this pan, the size of this pan is. But we're just going to start out with a small. Just spray your pan lightly. Because they will stick if you don't. Okay. All right, now, this dough, sometimes it can be hard to work with, but you just, just don't give up on it, okay? All right. And I do want to show you a little trick. If it does start to stick, spritz your scoop. How are we doing? Woo, we're doing good. It's looking great. Okay. If you want to, Chas, mm -hmm. if you want to take those uh, vegetables up and put them in the bowl. Okay, perfect. And then turn the, um, turn the skillet up. Okay. A little bit higher heat and we'll get that chicken going. Perfect. Just take your scoop and work the dough over to the side and press it in. Because if you don't press it in, it, it'll... It's very difficult for it to come out. I tell you another trick I use with my cooking spray. If you make a pan of macaroni and cheese or something with cheese on top, whether it's lasagna um, or well anything with cheese on top or something gooey, after it gets done, if you'll just do a light spray on top of the, 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 your item before you put your saran wrap or your lemon foil, when you take that uh, foil off, it will not stick to it. So this, it's, it's amazing. And also, if I make a, uh, um, a meringue pie, I'll spray the meringue with, after it's been uh, toasted with my cooking spray. And then when you cover it, if you have to cover it, then uh, it, it won't stick there either. What I'm going to do next is just get a little, little spritz on top, and I'll show you why in a second. I want to press these down. Okay. I don't want to use that spoon. Grab another one. Take your spoon. I flatten them a little because I don't want to have huge peaks. They will peak back up and rise. And had you not have sprayed the, the spray on that, when you lifted your spoon up, your biscuit would have came up with it. So, okay, these are ready for the oven. I have preheated the oven to 375. Um, 375 and you want to cook them about eight minutes give or take everyone's oven is different so what you're going to do is test the oven check your biscuits after about six minutes if they do seem to be a little uh, done then take them out right then so okay oh, we got did you change tongue I, I was going to set you two over there and because I'm the top you know <laughs> so I, okay. I noticed when I put the chicken in, you had a marinade. What, was, what were they soaking in? Olive oil and moors. That's it. Hmm. Okay. And you don't want to marinate your chicken very long because okay. it's such a porous meat. It absorbs so much. Oh, okay. So okay. all I put in that was probably, and I have a little extra here in case we needed it. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, I only, for all of that, I only put about two tablespoons of moors and then about two tablespoons of olive oil because oh, I okay. didn't want a heavy. And then right. just put it in the Ziploc bag. Okay, when those get done, are they, go ahead and turn them up just a little more, Chas, because I want All to right. make sure that we get everything in here. Okay. 
I've got it up, got it up, got it up a going. Good deal. It shouldn't take long because what I actually did to those chicken breasts before I marinated those, you know how a breast is thick on one end and narrow on the other? I put them between two pieces of saran wrap and I had a meat cleaver and I just beat the fat ends down. So that way, I, I didn't beat the skinny ends, but I beat the fat ends. It makes, uh, it, it makes it all an even surface and it, then it cooks evenly and it actually does cook faster without having to cook it so long that the small end gets start, done and dry. Oh, okay. So well, I wondered where you got the even chicken from because <laughs> I ain't never bought chicken like that. So. <laughs> from the even grocery store. That's it, that's it. That's <laughs> it, another trick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what we're gonna do is I have a house uh, seasoning mix and we're gonna have that recipe on the Facebook page. I'm gonna sprinkle the seasoning on there just a little. What have we got that set on, Chas? Um, it's on medium high. Go ahead and crank this little baby up on high. Gotcha. I wouldn't do that if you couldn't be right here to watch them. Okay. Perfect. Because we want to have time to get this cheese melted on there. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. We've browned it on one side. It's only going to need to cook about two or three minutes on each side. So we've got one side browned. Mm -hmm. Now what you need to do, Chas, I would go ahead and spoon um, the extra the, the vegetables. The vegetables. Okay. Put a little bit of vegetables on each of the chicken breasts. Okay. Okay. Mm, that'd be pretty. After we get the vegetables on the chicken breast, I have shred, I have sliced, and it's very miscut slices. I have sliced some, um, what this is called, it's called a white easy melt cheese. I like to use a cheese that melts fast and quick and smooth. You can use a baby Swiss, but um, cheddar, I don't, I don't recommend using a cheddar. What we're going to do, uh, we're going to be going to a break in a second while we're finishing these up. We're going to top this the vegetables with the cheese put the lid on it because what we want to do we want it all to melt down and form just a, a small small sauce it's not a saucy menu an item but uh, now that we've got those on there we're going to go ahead put the cheese on mm. and when i slice this i didn't take the time to go get my, my cheese slicer because it doesn't matter not every chicken breast is the same size anyway that's okay true. that's true so what we're these will cook down Now, I am going to add just a little bit of mores, not actually on the chicken, because when this cheese melts down, it will blend with this mores and make a little sauce. Ooh. Yeah, it really does. It smells wonderful. Smell a vision. Mm. Gotta have it. Can't beat it. Okay. And, Chassie, if you want to, mm -hmm. You we'll, some? we'll just put those vegetables all in there. Okay. Just, and then we'll put cheese on them. Ooh, that sounds great. Yeah. Anything with cheese on it. <laughs> yeah, cheese makes everything better. Oh, yeah. So, we really want to thank you for this segment. We're going to be coming right back with another surprise with our asparagus. Hello, and we want to thank Traditions Bank for being our lead sponsor. You know, our sponsors are wonderful. They're the reason we have the show on the air. And if you're looking for that community bank that gives you the friendly staff and that's there for you, and every time, and they also have 24-hour online banking. So you can give them a call, get that set up if you already have an account. If you don't, you need to give Debbie a call. If you're looking for that low interest rate, you give Debbie a call at 256 735 2138. They have six locations, so please call and get something set up with traditions. We also want to thank Axis Realty and Farmers Insurance. If you're looking for that perfect spot to move into or a perfect lake house, if you're needing insurance for your house, your auto, cars, boats, give Tanya Williams a call. She does both. She's located at Good Hope and she's just past Clayton Mobile Home on the left. Um, actually, actually, she's just before Clayton Mobile Home on the left. So we'll make sure that that's right. Uh, so insurance needs, real estate needs. Give Tanya a call. Her number is 256-736-2636. Uh, and, of course, Chastity Jordan. And you'll enjoy Chastity today on the show. She's helping me today, and she's one of the sponsors. 
and Chastity has been doing hair for 16 or 17 years, so she really knows what she's doing. She can give that customized hair color. She, she can do hair for all of, every need in the family, from the children, from the first baby's haircut to grandma's set and curls. So anything that's needed, you give her a call. Her number is 256-734-2042 and ask for Chastity. And primary care. Coleman Primary Care is located downtown Coleman. They're the family practice. It's the only family practice that offers uh, uh, quite a few doctors on staff. They're located one block south of the old Coleman Hospital, if any of you remember that. And that's on Clark Street. It's 408 Clark Street. If, you have, if any of your family has a need for medical attention, please give them a call. Their number is 256 734-3202 and their office hours Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. And we want to thank all of our sponsors and when you visit any of these sponsors, please tell them thank you for sponsoring our show. Catering by Teresa is rapidly becoming a tradition to the people of Coleman County. For over 12 years, Teresa has catered corporate events, banquets, class reunions, weddings, rehearsal dinners, business luncheons, and holiday parties. Made from scratch meals with little or no MSGs, the variety of choices ranges from prime rib and ribeye steaks to pulled pork barbecue, grilled pork chops, and chicken cordon bleu. Also good old country cooking like meatloaf, country fried steak, and homemade soups and stews. Even specialty menus include vegetarian, diabetic, hors d'oeuvres, and appetizers. Each job is customized to fit the customer. When you want a memorable event, call Catering by Teresa today. Welcome back. Now what we're going to do, we're going to do asparagus with a lemon zest. We're going to cook it in olive oil, put a little, sprinkle a little salt. You can use kosher salt, or sea salt, or regular salt. Uh, today I just have my regular salt on the set, but a lot of times, just for a twist, you put a little kosher salt on there. It gives a little crunch. So have, I don't know if any of you have ever broken asparagus or cut it, so before you cook it, there's always a, a, a rubbery tough end at the end of it. So hold it about middle ways, hold it at the end, and just give it a snap. This part, it doesn't matter if you're penny pinching and you think, oh, I'm throwing half of it away. You believe me, you don't want to keep it. <laughs> so, Chas, there's a few more to do. Okay. If you'll do those. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is start zesting the lemon for it. This is my little handy-dandy lemon zester. I don't put much lemon zest on it, just enough to give it just a little bite, a little flavor. So we're going to pull it around. Chastity's going to start out by putting the olive oil in the pan. Go ahead and have your pan heated up. And uh, yeah, that's good. Okay. Just put your, you can blanch your asparagus beforehand, but what we're going to do is we're going to saute those just a little bit in the olive oil and the salt. Yeah, that's it. I don't want much. And then we're going to put the lid back on and let it steam. Ooh. Yeah, that's what's going to make them a little tender crisp. Okay. All right, that's all. I'm going to reserve this lemon in case I want to do want to put a little lemon juice in there. Okay, we've got them in there. In yeah, there or, ready. Okay. Go ahead and toss them and cover okay. them with the olive oil first. Okay, all right. We'll yeah, that way the salt will stick That's to it. That's right. We'll pull off. Ah, we we'll get this out of the way. Are we ready? Ooh, we're ready now. All right. Okay, perfect. Not a lot, but let's set these over to the side. Here's our lemon zest. Okay. And I might even cut and put a little lemon in it. I'm not sure yet. Sometimes okay. I do, sometimes I, I don't. What we're going to start with now, we're going to start with our twice-baked potatoes. Now, I have already pre-baked these. And what I do, wash them really well, and then I cover them with olive oil. And I did sprinkle these with the kosher salt. I don't know if you can even see that or not. But I love the taste of the kosher salt. Just cut them in half. Find the flat side of your potato. That way it'll lay evenly like that, okay? We're gonna get all of these cut. Okay. 
Because see, if you, if you cut it this way, it's not going to stand up. So find your, I, I like to find my flat potatoes doing the twice baked. Ooh, this is a great idea that. if you have like leftover baked potatoes or something. And it really Never is. Never thought about that. It really yeah. is. Put them in the yeah. fridge for no more than two days. Yeah. Two days, bring them back out, do a twice bake. and okay. uh, Yeah. That'll work. So, all right. What we're going to do now, get a pretty sturdy spoon, one that's not pliable. Get your potatoes and just spoon it out. You want to leave just a little, and whoops, I got a little bit too much. But that's not going to hurt anything. If you do that on the bottom, it's not so bad. If you do it on the side, sometimes it'll tear and it won't hold up. So as we get these done, Chastity put the lid back on there so they would have a little steamed effect. Doesn't take asparagus long to cook because if it cooks too long, then you have soggy floppy asparagus, mm. which is not good. So if you want to give those a toss, Chas. Okay. Is it doing okay? Ooh, it's looking wonderful. Good. This is time consuming, but believe me, it's well worth it. Well worth it. Is it better on the potatoes to do them like when they're cool and not hot or does it matter? Or? It all depends on your cook time. Okay. If you want to do them the afternoon. Yeah. And That's one thing that I could pre-do them maybe. Yeah. And then you can pre-do <laughs> these. Okay. You can actually pre-scoop them out. I wouldn't oh. pre-mix it though because you want okay. to pre-scoop it out, cover it tightly, put your uh, skins back in a bowl, cover those tightly, because you don't want them to dry out, because they right. will if they don't have the, the, the inside meat in oh, it. Oh, okay. So, all right. We're almost finished here. It doesn't take long once you get these scooped out. This is what takes longer. I'm gonna do one without the onions and all the mixture. That way, if you just wanna do a, a, a simple twice bake, no problem. Do a little butter and cheese, because if you have any picky eaters in the house, a lot of children doesn't like all this stuff. So, we'll do it this way. Okay. I have got... All right. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to put about a tablespoon and a half sour cream, about a fourth of a cup. I can eyeball this. I've done it so many times. About a fourth of a cup of cheese, about a fourth of a cup of butter. Woo, yeah. Now, I have some dark green onions chopped. I like to do that for garnish. I'm going to put about three onions in there. This is my crumbled, cooked and crumbled bacon. Now, I did, did this in advance also. About one slice of bacon per potato. Hmm. Give that a toss. I'm going to put in a little, little bit of salt. Everybody has to have their potatoes salted. So... They said they oh. did that for good luck. Yep, that's what they say. There you go. <laughs> well, I wasn't standing My behind day you go, is wow. gonna be good now. I never got that salt out of this hair. <laughs> Give this a toss, and I start out with a lesser amount in case I need to add. If you put in too much sour cream or too much butter and cheese, then it, it's you know it's not a good thing. Okay. If your potatoes are slightly warm, they do mix better. If you want to, you can go ahead and cut those off, and then okay. when they set, they'll continue to cook. Perfect. All right. Now what we're going to do, got my pan ready. You don't have to spray the pan because your potatoes already have the oil base on the bottom. I'm going to get a couple of these done to show you what they're going to look like, and while we're on a commercial break, I'm going to finish these up and get them in the, get them in the oven. Okay, there's one. I'm going to do two. Okay. Now, I like to go back, put a little bit of the green, a little bit of the bacon, drizzle a little more butter, mm. melted butter, and a little cheese. We're going to put these in the oven. They're going to be cooking while we're on a commercial break. 
They're going to cook. I put the oven on 350, and they're going to bake only about 10 minutes, probably 8 to 15. Depends on your oven, depends on how many potatoes are in the oven, and if your potatoes are cold. So when we come back, we're going to... We're going to do dessert next. How does that Woo! sound? Oh, so, yeah. yeah, when we come back, we're going to get this mess cleaned up. We're going to uh, listen to our sponsors and thank them very much and come back and do dessert. So you come back and see us. We want to thank Traditions Bank for being our lead sponsor of What's Cooking by Teresa. And Traditions Bank, it's your community bank. It's your bank that will make you feel like a family. They have a friendly staff. They have six locations in and around Coleman. One is downtown, one's Holly Pine, and then Dodge City. They also have them in Arley, Hayden, and Priceville. We have done a lot of business at Traditions, and we really enjoy, you know, whenever we have a need, we'll give them a call. So you need to call Debbie for a really good interest rate. Number is 256-735-2138. So give them a call. Another one of our sponsors, Coleman Primary Care. You know, Coleman Primary Care, they're the only family practice that's located downtown. They're on Clark Street, and that's about one block from the old Coleman Hospital in downtown. The doctors are Dr. Bostick, Montgomery, Elliot, Quinn, Schindel, and Dr. Kosha. So give them a call. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. They also take walk-ins at certain times, so give them a call. Their number, 256-734-3202. And we also want to thank Doug Doggett. You know, I mentioned them in the show. And Doug Doggett's, you need to go down there, see what they have for Valentine's, because you know that special sweetheart needs a special gift. So give them a call. They're a family-owned, operated business. They're lo located on 215 Compass Way. Their telephone number, if you need to give them a call to see if they have that special item, is 256-734-7883. Eight, three. So give them a call if you need a watch, a diamond, a necklace, or any Sorelli jewelry. Also, we want to thank Dr. Swader, Dr. Sherry Swader, MD, and Dr. Diana Wilhite, CRNP. They are CPC neurologists. They're located in Professional Building 3 at Coleman Medical Center. And they do diagnosis and treatments of the nervous systems, and um, also they do um, uh, scanning, they do uh, I want to get this straight because I don't want to mess her up. They do uh, the disorders of the brain, spinal cord, the nerves, and the muscles. So I wanted to get all that in there for Dr. Swader. They'll do EEGs. They do nerve conduction studies and lumbar punctures. Their hours are Monday through Thursday from 8 to 4. They're only open on Friday from 8 to 10. So give them a call if you have any disorders. The number is 256 Seven three six one six one five. So any disorders of the nervous system or any back pain or anything, give them a call and tell Dr. Sweater thank you for being one of our sponsors. Catering by Teresa is rapidly becoming a tradition to the people of Coleman County. For over 12 years, Teresa has catered corporate events, banquets, class reunions, weddings, rehearsal dinners, business luncheons, and holiday parties. Made from scratch meals with little or no MSGs, the variety of choices ranges from prime rib and ribeye steaks to pulled pork barbecue, grilled pork chops, and chicken cordon bleu. Also good old country cooking like meatloaf, country fried steak, and homemade soups and stews. Even specialty menus include vegetarian, diabetic, hors d'oeuvres, and appetizers. Each job is customized to fit the customer. When you want a memorable event, call Catering by Teresa today. Thank you for coming back with us because I knew you couldn't miss the dessert. Mm -hmm. What we're going to start with, we're going to do the magic bars first because they have to bake a little. And they're so simple. This is a wonderful recipe that you can do with your children. And actually, Chastity gave me the recipe. Her husband loves these. Loves them. Love so them. she shared it with me. I served it on a job the other day. Everyone liked it. So I said, you know, we're going to do it on the show. We're going to start with two cups of crushed graham cracker crumbs. Very, very easy. Half a cup of melted butter. Okay. You're going to want to press this in, stir it, and this is just your basic 
bar base. This recipe can be used for the base of a cheesecake. Add a little sugar to it, about a couple of tablespoons. Good cheesecake base. Uh, you can do a banana pudding bar and use this as the base and then layer it with bananas and top it with pudding and we might do that on the show one day. It's just a good base. After she told me the recipe, I thought, I've done that before. So all you're going to do, just give that a stir, press it in. And I may go through this one pretty quick because the other recipe, doing the red velvet cake, may take a little while. So you're going to press this down firmly and evenly. Make sure you don't have any holes in it. Move that. Because you don't want any of the chocolate chips to go down and stick to the bottom of the pan. You want it to scoop out evenly. You don't have to spray this pan because the butter, the melted butter in it is going to make it turn loose. So here comes the difficult part. <laughs> Pick up the chocolate chips. Eee. One That's cup. my kind of recipe right there. One cup of chopped pecan. Yep. And what you might want to do, instead of doing two cups of chocolate chips, mix it up. Do one cup of chocolate chips. Do one cup of butterscotch, uh, mm -hmm. car, anything. Okay, press those in. One cup. And you can use more or less of the nuts. You can use more or less. So all it is, one cup of the nuts, one cup of coconut. Spread it around evenly because you want everybody to get a bite of everything. Press it. You want to press this down because when it does come out, you want it to lift out evenly, evenly and easily. Can't talk, can I? <laughs> That's all right. That's I all right. Either. And then just one can of sweetened condensed milk. Drizzle it over evenly. So all this is is your uh, graham cracker base pressed down, two cups of chocolate chips or any chip you want, one cup of nuts, one cup of coconut, and then top it with one can of sweetened condensed milk. I'm not going to mess that up by doing that because as this bakes, it will spread. So this is easy and done. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this. We're going to swap, okay? I'm going to pick this up. If you'll set that right there, Chas. I sure will. Because what we're going to do during a commercial break, we're going to cook that off. Okay. Because actually I think our uh, uh, potatoes, they're still they're, they're in there. They're looking good, though. Good deal. Get my mess over to the side. Now, what I've done, actually, you can see, I've cut half of this because I had to practice, of course. <laughs> Take a red velvet cake mix, and this is simple. Uh, this is one cake mix. Instead of doing a 9 by 13 where it's thicker, I, this is a, I think it's a 13 by 17, maybe a 13 by 18 pan. So I just uh, I put a parchment paper down, as you can see, put the cake on it, and baked it and let it cool. It's got to be cool or cold. So I'm going to put this over here. I'm using a cookie cutter. We're going to do the heart shape shapes. Then we're going to uh, put in between the layers. I went ahead and put my cream cheese icing in a bag. Now you can buy this icing already made. I went ahead and made this up. And I will put the recipe on uh, Facebook. So we're going to start with pressing out. So press down and just move it around because you want to turn it loose. It's going to stay inside the cookie press the co or the cookie cutter. You're going to press it out. It makes a little heart. Perfect heart. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, you can, and, oh, a little tip. Turn your heart upside down. That way you have less waste on the cake. But there's many ways you can serve these, and I'll show you. Uh, if you want to keep the fat content down and the sugar content down, don't, don't do the icing in the middle, and uh, don't make a sandwich out of it. Just uh, sprinkle it with some confectioner sugar. You know, it'll give you the look. So I'm going to jump up here since we're going we're gonna to rush along through this. This would be great to do with your kids, too. It they really would love is. that. It really is. I know my niece and nephew love to cook, so that would be, yeah. that'd be perfect. Yeah. And you could have the cake already made. Mm -hmm. You know, once the cake's made, um, it, it, it's simple. It just goes quick. You can do different cookie cutters. Uh, you can do, you can, this would be wonderful for Christmas. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, do, yeah. get a Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Now that we have some cut out, Chas, if you will set that underneath there, we'll get it out of the way. All right. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to take this red plate. 
All right. First of all, just to give us a little idea of what you can do uh, for the simple, just take a little bit of the confectioner's sugar. Sprinkle mm -hmm. on it. Doesn't have to be fancy or anything. I just wanted to show that one. All right. Take your heart. Pop the cream cheese icing right in the middle. I'm going to put this, notice I took it off the ledge because these are going to be really tall and it, it, you don't want it to fall over. All right, take another one, press down. It's like a mini cake. Hmm. I'm going to do a couple of these. Chess, if you want to, I've got some confectioner sugar and uh, I made a glaze, but okay. if you want to show how to make the glaze, if you'll put about a teaspoon of vanilla in this, okay. this is about a cup, cup and a half of confectioner sugar. I always eyeball it when I make a glaze. Right. Put about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon in there okay. and then start pouring a little milk at a time and just whisking it up okay. if you don't care. Okay. I'm going to get here so that way I don't know if they can see you or whatever. Oh, okay. Now I'm going to leave these. While she's doing that, I am going to take some of the glaze. Okay? Now, I don't want them to have to be watching me and watching you at the uh -huh. same time. <laughs> so I'm just going to I'm, I'm just going to watch you. All right. Now, um tell me a little bit about your your popping bag. Oh, what's, honey. What's up with that now? Very that is, expensive. Well, I like it. Because <laughs> I never have one That's when it. I need it. So Take a cup or a short glass. Okay. Poke it down in it, open it up, and put it down the side of the glass. All right. Then take your icing, spoon it into it, okay. zip it up, pull it out of the cup, and, you know, it just prevents a mess, first of all. And really, I wish I had done that on the show. I'll have to do that again. That's okay. <laughs> and then press it down to the corner, uh -huh. snip a little end off, and you've Got a popping bag. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, wow, 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 You've wow. got that pretty much done. Yep. I'm going to finish these, and so we're going to show everybody what it's going to look Perfect. like. Perfect. Now, this is the consistency that you want it. You don't want it to be too thick that it won't run. Just drizzle it over. And I tell you the secret to doing these, do them the day before. Because you want this icing to harden up just a little. You don't Ooh. want to cover it completely. You want to see it run down the sides. See how simple it is? This is simple. And this is great, too. Yeah. It would be good for a church project for the Sunday school kids to do if they were, you know, having something at church. That's an idea. All right. Now, another simple way is just you can just do one layer, no popped icing. There, there again, that will cut out mm -hmm. just a little bit. And these are almost like a pedophore. You know, the they thin really icing. Are. They really are. I, I didn't do these like a pedophore where you do the, the grate underneath and catch it all. And, and that's it. Hmm. Now, the extra... The, I had some crumbs left over from the extra part of the cake that we didn't use. Right. I crumbled those up. And then we're going to use these as garnish. Oh, wow. That just topped it. See? That looks really good. There you go. So we have, uh, you, can, you, you can even do it plain. And if you need to, if, if they crumble a little bit, do a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. And just a little bit of the... That's it. Awesome. Okay. And what we're going to do, this is our mini heart-shaped red velvet cakes. Variety of ways. We're going to get these plated up when we come back. We're going to have our um, magic bars. Oh, yeah. Those are going to be done. Actually, I have already pre-baked some. So, you know, we're going to have some of those cut up and on a plate. We're going to have everything out that we've cooked today, show you what it's going to look like, and we're going to taste it and see what it tastes like. So, please come back and join us for the finished products. Hello, and we want to thank Traditions Bank for being our lead sponsor. You know, our sponsors are wonderful. They're the reason we have the show on the air. And if you're looking for that community bank that gives you the friendly staff and that's there for you, and every time, and they also have 24-hour online banking. So you can give them a call, get that set up if you already have an account. If you don't, you need to give Debbie a call. If you're looking for that low interest rate, you give Debbie a call at 256 735 2138. They have six locations, so please call and get something set up with traditions. 
We also want to thank Access Realty and Farmers Insurance. If you're looking for that perfect spot to move into or a perfect lake house, if you're needing insurance for your house, your auto, cars, boats, give Tanya Williams a call. She does both. She's located at Good Hope, and she's just past Clayton Mobile Home on the left. Um, actually, actually, she's just before Clayton Mobile Home on the left. So we'll make sure that that's right. Uh, so insurance needs, real estate needs. Give Tanya a call. Her number is 256 uh, 736-2636. And of course, Chastity Jordan. And you'll enjoy Chastity today on the show. She's helping me today and she's one of the sponsors. And Chastity has been doing hair for 16 or 17 years. So she really knows what she's doing. She can give that customized hair color. She, she can do hair for all of, every need in the family, from the children, from the first baby's haircut, to grandma's set and curls. So anything that's needed, you give her a call. Her number is 256-734-2042 and ask for Chastity. And primary care. Coleman Primary Care is located downtown Coleman. They're the family practice. It's the only family practice that offers uh, uh, quite a few doctors on staff. They're located one block south of the old Coleman Hospital, if any of you remember that. And that's on Clark Street. It's 408 Clark Street. If, you have, if any of your family has a need for medical attention, please give them a call. Their number is 256 734-3202 and their office hours Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. And we want to thank all of our sponsors and when you visit any of these sponsors, please tell them thank you for sponsoring our show. Catering by Teresa is rapidly becoming a tradition to the people of Coleman County. For over 12 years, Teresa has catered corporate events, banquets, class reunions, weddings, rehearsal dinners, business luncheons, and holiday parties. Made from scratch meals with little or no MSGs, the variety of choices ranges from prime rib and ribeye steaks to pulled pork barbecue, grilled pork chops, and chicken cordon bleu. Also good old country cooking like meatloaf, country fried steak, and homemade soups and stews. Even specialty menus include vegetarian, diabetic, hors d'oeuvres, and appetizers. Each job is customized to fit the customer. When you want a memorable event, call Catering by Teresa today. Thank you for joining us for the end of the show. I hope you have enjoyed everything we've done. So what we're going to do is recap, tell you some kind of what we did and what we've got here. Uh, the first thing we did, we did the garlic cheese biscuits. And those were just with a simple biscuit mix, the cheese, the garlic, the milk, the butter, and we baked those off. Of course, use an ice cream, I mean a small ice cream scoop. Wonderful. And then the next thing we did was the portobello chicken. We used a boneless, skinless chicken breast on that. And then we did uh, the portobello mushrooms, the onions, the bell peppers, topped it with a, a melting white cheese and let that simmer down. And that is also good served over rice. Also, we've got the uh, twice-baked potatoes. The twice-baked potatoes are simple. You can do those the day before, scoop them out, and fill them, and then bake them when you get home from work. Those have the bacon, the cheese, the butter, sour cream, and we just bake those off at 350 for about 10 minutes. Next, we have our uh, asparagus, the sautéed asparagus and salt and lemon zest. And we just sautéed, it took about maybe five or ten minutes to sauté those down. And we covered those, let them steam a little, and when those were done, we plated them up. We have also our magic bars. The magic bars, are that's just a simple, simple uh, bar that we do. We cut and plate it. It's a good, good recipe for your children to help you with. Then we did the, uh, the mini, I guess, heart-shaped red velvet cakes. You cook your red velvet cake mix just as normal, but you cook it thin. If you don't have, I forgot to mention this earlier, if you don't have a small, um, a small large pan, a thin one, use two 9 by 13 pans. And that way when they bake off, they'll only about a half an inch to an inch thick. Then let those cool, you cut them out, top it with your icing, drizzle it with um, a glaze, and then serve it. And if you can do those the day before, that's wonderful because the glaze sets up. 
Then after we had all of our finished products, we plated it and just to show you what we've got and how you can serve it. So that covers all the food we did. And next month is Easter. So what I want you to do, we're getting, we're going to have a Facebook page started. I need for you to pull us up on Facebook. It's called What's Cooking with Teresa. And when you pull it up, like us. And then each time we do the show, you can pull up. We're going to put the recipes on there. And we'll correspond back and forth. If you have any certain recipes that you want us to do on the show, any ideas, please give us feedback. That's what we want. We want to incorporate the audience, and we want you to really enjoy it. And, and I do want to give a little shout out to a couple of ladies that watches the show regular. They'll call me and they'll just thank us for doing the show and thank Channel 2 for doing the show. It's Margie Hale at Jones Chapel and Granny Opie. She lives out of Holly Pond. Two dear ladies to me. And I do want to thank Chastity Jordan helping me today. It was my fun. Niece. It was fun. And you probably get tired of hearing me say Chastity Jordan all the time on the, the sponsors. But... <laughs> She does a wonderful job doing hair. How long have you been doing hair, Chad? 17 years. You believe that? 17 years. But yeah, I work down at Jade Drake Salon. And, and one thing, people have already started coming in and getting gift certificates for their wives and stuff for Valentine's Perfect. Day. So if Perfect. they're dieting, don't want that chocolate, or they say roses are going to die, come and let them pamper themselves. So come and see me, and yeah, I'll, I'll set up. that sounds good. And then on the sponsor information, we do give the telephone number, so you really need to give Chas a call. And um, also, Doug Dog, it, it's just, uh, Valentine's is right around the corner. Mm give them a call but uh, back to the show on Easter we're going to do an Easter program and I, I would love for y'all to give us some feedback on Facebook because uh, you got to try it yeah I'm going to try it that's you what we usually do with the show <laughs> <laughs> okay mm -hmm. Is it good? Yeah, I wish I had some. It okay, we, we did smell a vision earlier. Yeah, so now it's taste a vision. It is really good. Do you think we need to taste the chicken? Yeah. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. Y'all yeah, just, I'll just uh, take a time out right now. We're going to eat. <laughs> it, it looked really good, and I really didn't know if we should try it, but we will. Okay, I don't have a knife over here. That's so okay. I used my fingers. I, I'm going to hold my, my breath to see mm -hmm. how we can cut this. Okay. Oh, this is so good. All right, you tasted that. I'm going to taste this. Let's yeah, you taste the fall of it. It all is just falling apart mm -hmm. here. And Thomas would be so happy to have this for a Valentine's meal. Mm -hmm. This would be just his perfect sure. meal. Wouldn't have to beat the <laughs> the crowd. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to taste this. I'm oh, going to get yeah. you a fork. If we won't taste it all. I'll just get to mm -hmm. a biscuit. Okay. We're family. We feed each other. <laughs> yeah. My, look at the cheese. It's sticking. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get any cheese. It's not coming off. Okay, that's fine. I got cheese in my biscuit. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Oh, no, that's well, good. Well, good deal. That's good stuff. We're not going to mess these up. I'm going to save them for Valentine's. No. <laughs> yeah. You know, I might as well. Try this. You ain't going to run with the magic bar. I'm going to put well, this right here. Well, you've got to tell me if it's as good as yours. Mm-hmm. If it's not lie, it'll do. Mm. No, it's really, <laughs> really, really good. I love these things. They're so easy and they're so they're good. Easy. Mm. That's what's wonderful. Mm -mm -mm. I'm chewing, so mm -hmm. you too, so you can't fill in. I am sorry. Well, I do appreciate everybody that's watching the show. And I appreciate Chastity for coming. It was and fun. Helping. It was wonderful. It was. It was fun. fun so you really need to try this meal. All of this stuff is easy. And, uh, if you have any questions, Facebook me. I will give you the tips and everything that we've done today. So join us again when we do another show. Please watch and support our sponsors. And we want to thank you very much. And you have a blessed day.